Today we're going to change the cylinder 4 fuel injector on this 2012 Audi Q7 TDI. It's got the Kata engine. Uh, cylinder 4 is the driver front side. So you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It has a uh, cylinder contribution fault for cylinder 4. It's real common on these. Uh, typically it's the copper crush washers that burns out on these Kata engines, but We've already replaced all those a few months back, and I thought we were going to have an injector issue, and we sure enough do. So, all right, let's jump into it. All right, so we start by removing the fuel injector return line, which is this little one. I like to use Nipexes, open them up, grab the top of that clip rail, and just give it a slight pull, and that's how it comes off. It has that top ring that slides. Pull that out of the way. Be careful and do not break that because that's the whole injector return harness that you got to replace. And then next, I have this special tool to do injector lines. I got it on Amazon, super cheap. Set this off to the side. Next, you're going to undo the, the fuel injector pigtail. You can sometimes get these with your thumb, but normally I just use a screwdriver and push on that. Now you'll have to do this aluminum seal plate that seals around the injector. You have to undo all four Allen heads out of that, and then you'll have to rotate the plate so you can get to the injector hold down bolts. The four millimeter. I'm just using a wobble Allen. That way I don't have to get this intake off. Got butter fingers this morning. But if you don't have one of these wobble Allens, you will have to take off this upper intake rail. So not a big deal, but if you don't if you ain't got to, it's best not to. Now that we have that unbolted, I just use a little screwdriver up on the corner here and just spin it. Out of the way so you can get to those nuts. You've got a 10 millimeter nut right there and then one on the other side here. I'll show you when I take it off. And be careful to not drop this nut into the valve cover. And then you will have to remove the whole valve cover. You have to move all three of these injectors and the valve cover itself. Right there's one. And right there's the second one. Now sometimes you can just grab a hold of the injectors give them a little wiggle and they'll come right out usually not so so I made this little I cut the end of an old fuel line off and welded a nut on it that fit this thread so that way I can just slide this right on there just like so And there's the injector. So like I said, we already replaced all the copper washers in this a couple months back. And it did have a couple bad ones. But I figured there was going to be a bad injector regardless. So sure enough. So here's the injector retainer. Put it off the side. You're going to reuse it. And also the seal plate. here's the faulty injector now you almost always inside the injector bore in there there's always going to be soot built up in there 
so you're going to want to blow it out. So the best thing to do is use a blowgun with a needle tip to shove down in the bore of the injector hole. And give it a quick clean up. That way, put the new injector in, it's got a good seal face on it. So here we have the new injector. Now there is a uh, code on it for whenever we recalibrate for the idle quantity adjustment. So you want to take pictures of the codes here. Also, these do not come with the seal, the O-ring that goes right here. So make sure you buy this separate. First thing you do is just slide the new, well, typically you'd replace these every time, but since I just replaced these not long ago, I'm just going to reuse them. The seal plate. New O-ring installed. Now if you notice, this has a bow in it. You want the bow to go up like a U-shape. That way when, it, when you torque it down, it pulls. It'll bend this back flat and creates constant pressure on it. So basically just like this is how it'll go back together. Rotate this plate. So if you remember, that's how it come out. That's how it'll go right back in. Also, I want to make sure that you always have a copper washer on there. being quite the chore here to hold that on there at the same time while sliding it in with this intake in the way. There we go. And then you'll hear it kind of, I normally just push off the tip right here right there and then just push as hard as you can you'll hear it tink like it just done okay now we just torque it all back down Now rotate this seal plate back around and push it down. Okay. These are just little bitty bolts, so just go by the feel is how I do it. I've done hundreds of them, so. And this would have been easier to remove that injector with this intake out of the way, but I didn't feel like removing it, so. Then these, you can reuse them. I basically just treat them like how you would tighten an oil filter. Just snug and then just a quarter, quarter turn more. So they're snug and I just go just a smidgen more. Okay. It does not take much to seal those. Now put the return back on. So you just uh, push down each ear to here, click in, and then just push down the top and it's locked in. That's all there is to it. We'll start it. Uh, well, actually, we ain't gonna start it right away. We'll turn the key on, let the fuel cycle through, and then we'll start it. And then we'll go in and change the IQA code in the ECM. You don't have to change it, 
Um, that's just for idle. Idle speeds only is whenever that adjustment is made. So sometimes you might just have like a little funky idle, but you don't have to change that code to run the engine. Thanks for watching.